Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of IGCC Biology Revision. Today we're taking a look at the first part of Inheritance, Inheritance sorry, and it's chapter 17 of the syllabus. So I want you to have a quick read and we'll begin the video. So let's take a look at a couple of definitions, right? Uh, inside our cells we have something called the nucleus that contains genetic information. Right, uh, specifically speaking it, uh, it contains chromosomes which are thread-like structures of DNA and the DNA itself carries genetic information in the form of genes. So let's unravel the chromosome and uh, sort of isolate a single DNA molecule, right? Uh, the DNA actually is really important for our body because it codes for proteins. So every single you know, part of this DNA will actually code for different proteins. So a specific length of this DNA that codes for a specific protein is called a gene. So that's really important for you to know. So there must be a lot of different genes in our DNA and our bodies because we have a lot of different proteins. Things like enzymes, antibodies, receptors, neurotransmitters, we have heaps of them. And they're all really essential for the human body to work properly. So let's take a look at a, you know, look at, look at a DNA molecule in a bit more detail. So this uh, diagrammatic representation uh, suggests that the DNA is made of a double helix structure and uh, we've got the phosphate backbone being the yellow double helix uh, here and the helix is put together by what we call bases. We've got four main bases, we've got adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine and these bases join from one end to the other to hold the structure together. So what's really important is that in a gene, right, if you were to sort of take it apart in this specific length of a DNA that codes for a specific protein, you really need to understand that what's important is the sequence of bases inside this particular length or in this particular gene. So, for example, it could be that in this particular gene, you have the sequences of bases going, you know, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, a, T, G, for example, whatever, and this sequence of bases basically codes for the sequence of amino acids that are joined together to form a protein. As you're already aware, proteins are made of amino acids joined together, and amino acids, the sequences of amino acids that are joined together in a protein basically uh, differentiates one protein to the other. Protein 1 is completely different from protein 2, protein 2 is completely different from protein 3, right? Uh, a single swap in the sequences of bases, uh, sorry, the sequences of amino acids in a protein can change the sh entire shape of a protein. So it's really important to understand that the sequence of, uh, the sequence of amino acids inside a protein is vital uh, in the production of the function and the structure of a protein. So. Let's take a look at how we go from a DNA to a uh, to the production of a protein, right? So this DNA has a certain uh, part or a length of it that codes for a certain protein, and that's called a gene. And here we unravel the DNA, and we find that uh, these bases here have a fairly specific sequence and what that is is that is basically the genetic code so what we call an mRNA comes along and scans the DNA basically and copies the code onto itself so the mRNA therefore goes out of the nucleus and takes that copied code to the ribosome so the ribosome actually reads this code and the code on the mRNA that's derived from the, uh, the gene which is basically derived from the specific uh, sequences of the bases in that particular gene, right? So the ribosome takes a look at that and that codes for uh, the joining of specific amino acids to make a protein. In this case, we'll just take a look at the fact that it has coded uh, for the production of a protein with the sequence of amino acids in this particular order, going from yellow, red, you know, blue to green. So the sequences of amino acids that are that are formed here in this protein uh, has been derived from the gene 
via specific sequences of bases in that particular gene. I know I'm saying the word specific a lot, but it really is sort of the main point of this particular topic, right? So it is a fairly hard concept, but I want you to get your head around it. Um, ultimately, as long as you sort of understand it step by step, it should be all right. So once we move on, we'll take a look at the fact that a normal human cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes. So a diploid cell contains two sets of chromosomes, and that's the majority of our cells in our body. A haploid cell will contain a single set of unpaired chromosomes, so therefore 23 altogether. So a normal human cell has 22 pairs, and you know the, the last sort of pair is the X and the Y chromosome. So a male will have an X and a Y, a female will have two Xs. But we'll take a look at that in a bit more detail later. Ultimately, our body is going through cell division in majority of, uh, of, of throughout the day. In fact, every single second, our cells are going through some sort of nuclear cell division, right? So mitosis is when there's a nuclear division that gives rise to genetically identical cells, basically cloning, right? Our cells clone itself all the time. And that's really important for things like growth, repair, replacement, and um, asexual reduction in certain bacteria and things like that. Uh, you don't you don't actually require to know the stages of you know mitosis, but I've put it down here anyway as a diagram just to make it a bit more simple to explain. But what happens is that uh, you get um, you get a cell or a, you know a, a, a nucleus containing chromosomes. Here we've got two chromosomes, but of course in the human body we have forty six. Well, the main point here is that uh, the, the chromosomes replicate, we've got DNA replication. So it goes from two chromosomes to four chromosomes in this diagram, but in the human body it'll double from 46 to 92. Uh, the main reason for doubling is because the cell then split and uh, each cell basically uh, takes away half of the chromosomes. So we've got uh, 96 here, or sorry, 92 here in the human body. And when the cell split, we've got 46 and 46 in the daughter cells. And that's really important because initially if the DNA replication didn't happen, then you'll just go from 46 and half that to 23 and 23 and that wouldn't work, right? That wouldn't be identical. If you're going from 46, you need to have cells that have 46 chromosomes um, after the, uh, the genetic uh, nuclear division. And that's uh, what we call cloning, right? So the main point here, I think, is that the chromosomes are doubled and then the cell splits and the main reason for the chromosomes doubling before the split is to maintain chromosome number. Of course, some cell divisions don't maintain that chromosome number, and that's when we uh, talk about meiosis, or you know, and that's the nuclear division that's giving rise to genetically different cells, mainly for the uh, production of gametes, sperm cells, egg cells, which need to have 23, right? So basically, it's a process by which uh, diploid cells containing 46 become haploid cells. Uh, by halving the chromosome number. So the uh, combination of two gametes, sperm and egg, will fuse um, and uh, you know it'll cause, uh, it'll produce a, zy a zygote uh, that has 46 chromosomes which is you know the amount of a normal human cell. So uh, because the uh, gametes will fuse together and you know each gamete is from two different individuals, it uh, introduces a lot of variation and that's a good thing. So the meiosis is a bit more complicated in terms of uh, the stages, so I haven't really bothered to put it on. You're not actually required to know, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just understand the concept. So that's all for today, guys. Uh, we'll be continuing on with the rest of the chapter in the next video, so I'll see you then. Thank you.